Hi everyone. Um, again, my name is Phil Simeone and I work for Centurion Technologies. I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar on solving the ransomware dilemma. Um, basically, we're going to take about 30 minutes today. And I'm going to go over a few slides and kind of go over the history and give you a little detail about ransomware in general. And then at the uh, towards the end, we're going to go into a video um, that I recorded last Friday, May 22nd. And so I'd also like to introduce my co-organizers, Tony Shiblum and Demetrius Levet. They'll be helping us answer questions during the webinar. Um, I do want to remind everybody that your microphones are muted for presentation purposes. Um, if you have questions, we definitely encourage you to ask them. And you can ask them using our questions and chat panel of the GoToWebinar interface. So again, um, I'm going to go ahead and get into the first slide. And really, what is ransomware? So as you can see here, it's a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer system until a sum of money is paid. I'd also kind of like to add that not only will they block access, but they will also encrypt your valuable files. And this definition is from OxfordDictionaries.com. And one of the example sentences that I included on this PowerPoint page I thought was kind of interesting. Um, although some or although ransomware is usually aimed at individuals, it's only a matter of time before businesses is targeted as well. And I think that's probably a very true statement. Um, I'm sure some business, businesses are already um, infected with those types of things. And um, that's usually due to an employee going to a website or getting an email that they think was legitimate and basically getting their machine infected. So again, ransomware is a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer system until a sum of money is paid. So there's two types of ransomware currently out there. There's lock screen ransomware where you can't really use your computer at all except maybe to stare at the lock screen or pay up the extortion fee to unlock it. And then there's the crypto ransomware where your computer runs just fine but all your files are scrambled. And encrypted. Usually lock screen ransomware tries to frighten you into paying up by using uh, police logos or government logos or something that looks authoritative and government like often really vaguely tailoring um, to your own geographic area uh, or your own jurisdiction and they, they rip off logos and web banners and and basically assert that you've committed some kind of cyber crime Right. And that's kind of usually the, the telltale sign of the lock screen ransomware. Crypto ransomware, on the other hand, really doesn't bother with police pretense or government notices. The, the crooks really are quite happily just, you know, they're quite happy to remind you who you're dealing with by letting them know that um, this is us and we're, we're holding your computer ransom. Uh, and if you don't pay, you're never going to get your files back. So again, currently there's two types. There's one type of ransomware that restricts access to your computer and another type that encrypts your files. So what is the ransomware attack like in motion? Well, once it's launched, you're usually in pretty much trouble. Um, you probably don't even know that it's happening until you get the message. So when it's first launched, the virus decrypts its data section with a 256-bit AES key. The first four bytes are used as a sample ID added to basically the end of the encrypted files. And then the virus copies itself to a temporary folder and a registry key for that copy's auto run to be created. In most cases, the virus will delete the operating system recovery points and disable the, the task manager, the registry editing, um, the process 
Explorer and the Process Explorer 64-bit processes. Um, the virus basically then spreads out and encrypts several types of documents, usually the ones that you value the most, which is, of course, the whole idea for these um, malicious folks that are writing this, this code. Ransomware is, it just peaked the billion dollar mark this year. Um, and Kaspersky Network, or, excuse me, Kaspersky Security Network indicates that 2.8 million crypto attacks were registered in 2013. Nine times, and again, that's nine times more than in 2012. So it's only increasing. Um, it's thought that 40% of ransomware victims agree to pay, which is, you know, which is a shame because it just feeds the beast. And we'll kind of talk about that later. So the ransom attack in motion, once it launches, you're in pretty much trouble. The virus will terminate the following processes. Again, it'll um, eliminate Windows Task Manager, um, Registry Editor, the Process Explorer, and Process Explorer 64-bit. It's going to delete all your system recovery points. Okay, so if you think you're going to try to do a system recovery, forget it. It's not going to work. They're too smart for that. And then you have a whole big list down here, if you see under the third item, where those are the types of file names which they're going to be searching for. This particular you know, ransomware is going to be searching for. And if they find those, they're going to encrypt those files. So there is a lot, and they keep on growing. So... It uses, ransomware uses a 256-bit AES key or advanced encryption standard. And, you know, a lot of people probably don't know exactly what a 256-bit AES is. And basically what it is, it's a string of 256 ones or zeros. So it's a key that has a possible combination of 2 to the 256 power. That is a lot of combinations. Um, as a matter of fact, you would be there a very, very long time trying to break that encryption code if you just didn't want to pay it and you want to be stubborn and say, I'm going to break this encryption key and heck with these guys. Well, you would actually be sitting there longer than the universe has existed. Um, and actually, if you look up some other statistics, it'd be 40 times longer than the actual universe has existed. But I thought I'd just take uh, the minimal side of that and say longer than the universe has existed, which is obviously a pretty long time. So again, if you are infected with ransomware that's using a 256-bit AES key, you're pretty much stuck. Okay, Your, your files are going to stay encrypted. Ransomware uses a unique code for every case. Okay, for every infection. So there's not just one um, one key, if you will, on encryption key, all right, for a whole bunch of different ransomware. So there were actually, in some previous variants, you did find that. Uh, but the um, hackers, basically, the code writers for ransomware learn pretty quick. And so there's a unique key for basically every instance, all right? So you're pretty much stuck if you don't pay or if you don't have backup for your important files. So again, I'm going to mention backup being a very, very important part, and you'll hear that everywhere you go. If anyone that you've ever uh, heard speak or if you read any articles about ransomware, the, the biggest thing is that you back up your files, folks. And again, I'm going to absolutely recommend that you do that. Now, if you don't back up your files, are you completely lost? Okay, so let's find out. Um, with ransomware, all right? There's several variants, and it's growing. All right, so you'll see some bullet points here. CryptoLocker is probably the most recognized of all the ransomware out there. And then you have CryptoWall, and then Tesla Crypt, and you know Worm underscore Freelock, and then you can see uh, SymphLocker. And then the last one here, Trojan.CryptoLocker.S, is actually the most recent variant of ransomware that we're able to find in, uh, in a honeypot that our IT side of the house was able to extract. So this actual ransomware, trojan.cryptolocker.s, as identified by Symantec, is otherwise known as the Los Polos Hermanos, or Breaking Bad themed ransomware. All right. So it seems like basically what the crooks have kind of done 
in this case is they've copied maybe their hero on a TV series, in this case, the, the Breaking Bad TV show. And I, I'm sorry, I've never actually seen it, so I, I can't speak a whole lot about the actual show. But I do know um, that basically this logo here that you see of the two chickens is, is something to do with a restaurant in the show. And apparently these code writers um, wanted to take it a little extra step, a little bit further. And so I guess maybe to be humorous for their own purposes, they created Los Polos Hermanos. Okay. And again, this is a message of what, what happened to your machine if you were infected with this particular ransomware. So as soon as you're infected, this picture will pop up and it'll let you know your important files have been encrypted. Photos, documents, videos, etc. And so they want 450 Australian dollars. And this is actually one that was focused in Australia. Okay, so it was first found in Australia and it's spread since then. So we're going to kind of focus on this one a little bit. Um, and by focusing on this one, um, what I've done is I have created a video recording last Friday, May 22nd. And what it's going to demonstrate is a live ransomware attack on two PCs loaded with those Polos Hermanos. And basically, they're in the video, um, you'll see that it, they're ready to launch. So in the video, what we're trying to do is basically mimic a attack. If, if someone clicked on an email attachment or they went to a website, torrent site, and they infected their machine, okay, what that's what this is going to show. So um, we weren't able to go through the whole email scenario to make it look like a real uh, story, if you will, but for the purposes, it's the same exact thing. So we have a virgin copy of it, and you'll see in this video, I'll run it on one PC that is protected with Smart Shield, and then another PC that is not protected with Smart Shield. Okay, so everybody's going to be able to actually see a live video of that. Um, due to the webinar also, and just connection speeds, um, the video may not be absolutely as clear as we would like it, just because of the limitations uh, of that. But it is going to be posted on our YouTube site. So if hopefully the video doesn't come out um, kind of chunky, um, but if it does, we're going to post it on our YouTube site, and you should be able to see it just fine there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the video, if you'll excuse me just for a second. Hi everybody, my name is Phil Simeone and I work for Centurion Technologies. And what I'm going to show you today is how our Smart Shield software and our Smart Shield Plus software for home use will be able to stop ransomware from affecting your computer permanently. So, what I have here is Los Polos Hermanos, which is one of the more recent variants of CryptoLocker or ransomware. It's actually uh, based off the breaking, I'm sorry, it's named off the breaking bad thing. So it seems like the ransomware coders have a sense of humor when it comes to TV villains and naming their new ransomware after that. So we tried to do this through an email, but unfortunately our emails were uh, detecting that there was a virus or a piece of malware in the email, so we couldn't uh, demonstrate that piece. So we took the file, a virgin file that we acquired through quite a bit of searching over the web. And again, what we have here is Los Polos Hermanos, one of the newest versions of ransomware. And I'm going to go ahead and double click this in a minute. But first, what I want to show you is all the documents. So I'm going to open up my library. And in my library, I have all these documents here. Could be work documents, PDFs, whatever they might be. So they're all in normal status right now. I go to my pictures. And I let's say I open up my pictures. Again, I have all my pictures here, so everything's normal, everything's looking good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run the virus. So here we go. And notice, if you would, our hard drive light it's not really blinking very fast at this time, and you're going to see that change quite a bit in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the virus. And 
in just a second or two, you're going to start seeing the red light on the hard drive pretty much maintain a constant status. Here is our pictures, our sample pictures. Those are all normal right now. And you're going to see these change in just a few seconds. And again, if you're able to see the light there, you can see it's really whizzing right now. So the virus is doing its thing. And now our, our files are encrypted. And if you look in this particular directory, and actually in every directory in your PC, they're going to stick a how to decrypt files document in there. So these people want you to know exactly how to pay them. All right. So again, let's go to my documents. Let's open that up. You're going to see I lost all my thumbs. You'll see that every one of those documents is encrypted. So it has definitely done its job. So let's go ahead back to the desktop and we're going to wait for the message here to pop up. And it's going to basically inform us that all our files have been encrypted and it's going to give us instructions on how to recover those files. You will also notice down here in the system tray, these are all now unusable. Don't know how to read it. Windows can't open this file because they don't recognize it. It's encrypted. So Los Polos Hermanos, there's two recent articles um, in the last couple weeks, one by Semantic and one by Naked PC. Um, and one was dated May 10th and the other one was dated May 15th. So again, this is the most recent one we could find. And there's all types of variants of ransomware out there. So as we move into the future, you're going to see all different variants. And obviously with a sense of humor, like these guys have, those Polos Hermanos, again, using the Breaking Bad theme. Um, and now we see our message. So here it is. Your important files have been encrypted. Photos, documents, videos, USB, etc. So if you had a USB drive in here as well at that time, it would also encrypt your USB drive. So it gives us contact information gives us what the cost is. In this case, it's one Bitcoin, about $100 US dollars. Explains where to send the Bitcoins and the actual account number to send it to. So if I hit OK, oh, there it is. There's the Los Polos Hermanos image. And that pretty much tells me that all my files, everything that I really care about on this machine are now encrypted. And that I'm going to have to pay about 100 US dollars to get those files back. And so. With SmartShield and SmartShield Plus, the technology allows you to make a mistake, okay? If you're going to a risky website, if you're opening up risky emails, perhaps, you want to definitely protect your computer with SmartShield or SmartShield Plus, a home user product. In this case, I didn't know, or I did know what I was doing, but obviously the demonstration is to, to illustrate and show what's going to happen to somebody when they don't know they have a piece of malware like ransomware on their machine and what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do in this particular type of ransomware, it doesn't lock me out of my computer. Okay, it just encrypts my files. So there's two types of ransomware, one that's going to encrypt your files and the other one that's going to lock your computer. So I'm going to come down here to the start menu. I'm going to go ahead and restart the machine. With SmartShield or SmartShield Plus, you need to do a restart to wipe away all the unwanted changes. And so we're going to go ahead and accomplish that. Over here we have the computer without Smart Shield on it. And we're going to go ahead and run that. <clears throat> Once again, nothing's really happening. And that's the whole idea. You think something is happening and nothing is happening. So let's go to those sample pictures. Let's let that just stay open for a while and then you'll eventually be able to see these images encrypt themselves from the Los Polos Hermanos or Breaking Bad theme ransomware virus. And there they are, just encrypted. This laptop, again, running Windows 7, does not have Smart Shield or Smart Shield Plus home user product on it. This has normal antivirus. 
On this machine here, we have Smart Tool Restoring, and, and the machine's putting back up, and you can see here my desktop is back to normal. I open up my documents, go to my pictures, all those pictures that were encrypted, all my documents and my documents that were encrypted are no longer encrypted. So even when you make a mistake, that's where Smart Shield comes in. Obviously, you want to avoid anything that's going to put malware on your machines, any any sites, any kind of emails, any websites that have drive-by downloads, etc. And there's all kinds of them out there on a website, on the internet. With our software, it allows you to make that mistake. And if you do have a mistake, you simply reboot it, and everything that happened is going to go back to normal the way you want it. So over here we have, again, the laptop. And right here is our message. Same message I spoke about earlier and showed you. And wham, well, there's the picture. And without Smart Shield, this machine is going to be pretty much useless. So I can restart it and see what happens to a system restore. And that won't work either. So what we have here again is just your control, a machine with smart without smart shield, and over here you have a machine with smart shield. We'll wait for this machine to boot up and we'll go back and look at those documents and again you'll see that they are still encrypted. The best thing that you can do to prevent this, besides using a product like SmartShield, is to back up your files. Anything like this, where you have a chance where you might have a, a piece of malware, you always want to take precautions because not all the antiviruses are going to get it. Um, most of them will eventually, but the zero-day viruses, uh, zero-day attacks that happen, that's what we're really kind of concerned about, um, and that's where SmartShield comes in. It provides a deeper level of protection for your computer, and in conjunction with antivirus, that defense in depth, it's going to protect your computer probably like nothing you've ever used before. So again, you can see everything's back to normal on this one, and as this one boots up, it automatically throws up this notepad. Your important files have been encrypted, photos, documents, videos, USB, et cetera, crypto locker. So again, they want to make it pretty pretty uh, visible that your machine has been infected with ransomware. So this pretty much concludes our demonstration. Um, again, this is Smart Shield and Smart Shield Plus for home use, protecting you, the user, from ram ransomware. My name is Phil Simeone, and we thank you for taking this time to watch the video. Have All right. Let me go ahead and throw my <clears throat> PowerPoint back up there. So hopefully everybody was able to see that video okay. Um, again, we're going to post it on our YouTube site. Um, it'll take um, probably a couple days to get it up there. Um, or actually, it probably won't even take that long. Um, but you can, you can definitely view it from there. So the whole point of that video is basically that, again, we all make mistakes, right? If we go to a website that we think is, is safe or we get an email that we think is safe, um, it looks like it comes from our friend and we click on an attachment that we think is a photo but it's got a double extension and we didn't notice it and of course that's a sure sign whenever anything has a double extension you definitely want to avoid it so it's very conceivable that even as you know cautious as we can be sometimes we're going to still get infections with smart shield you it basically gives you a unique hard drive protection um, something that works in conjunction with antivirus so it's that whole concept of defense in depth. So when you combine antivirus and a product like Smart Shield on your machine, you're really giving yourself the best chance to basically get out of any kind of a situation 
um, that may damage your machine due to malware or, again, in this case, such as ransomware. So we'll protect against that ransomware, blue screens of death, zero-day attacks, user mistakes, even targeted attacks. So um, if they someone puts a botnet on your machine and uses your resources, if you reboot that machine at the end of the day, that botnet is gone, whereas most of the time it just would stay there and you never know that it was working for somebody overseas in conjunction with a thousand other computers to hack the Department of Defense. So again, Smart Shield is used in the most volatile of computer areas. Um, that's why our public libraries, our schools, um, internet cafes use Smart Shield because they need something more than just antivirus. They need something more than just group policy. Um, when you combine all those and you have that defense in depth, that's really the best way to approach your IT security. So we have, again, Smart Shield Plus for our home use, and you can purchase that product, smartshieldplus.com, uh, and you can purchase that, that website online. And for our enterprise product, Smart Shield Suite, you can view information at centurientech.com. Uh, don't be shy to call us if you have questions. So what, again, we've, we've tried to show you today is a way that you can overcome the ransomware dilemma. All right. When it happens, you're stuck. You're either paying for it, or if you're lucky and you have backup, you can go to that. Um, but again, it's one of those things where the more protection you have, the better. And Smart Shield is about as deep a protection as you can get. Um, I'd like to thank everybody today for attending the webinar. It was a 30-minute webinar, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here um, very soon. Um, if you have questions, we're going to keep the the, the webinar going for a few more minutes. So if you do have questions, please don't be shy. Uh, go ahead and ask them using the questions and chat panel, and we'll be glad to answer those that we can answer for you. Um, again, check out our YouTube site here in a day or two, and you should find that video up there. Um, tell us what you thought of our webinar on Facebook and Twitter. We'd like to hear you through that means. And again, I want to thank my co-organizers, Tony Shiblum and Demetrius Levet. Um, without I guess that's about it for today. And again, everybody, thank you very much for your time. And I hope you enjoyed this webinar.